Hey y'all, welcome back to my shop. Today I want to focus on some basic concepts for beginners. If you're an experienced wood turner, this probably will bring back a smile to your face as you remember some of those, uh, those uh, early days, but you're not, probably not going to learn anything new. First, use sharp tools. Uh, a tremendous turner, John Jordan, uh, says that the answer to probably 90% of a novice turner's problems are sharpen your tool. So with that in mind, um, keep, keep in mind, if it's almost sharp, it'll almost cut. Now, act, the actual uh, sharpening is beyond the scope of this particular video. That's the uh, basis for something in the future, possibly. We could, ha we could have a separate video on, on each, each particular uh, sharpening tool. But keep in mind, the number one principle, sharpen your tools. If in doubt, sharpen your tool. When we have hands-on sessions at my club, and I'll come up to a turner that's, that's struggling a little bit with uh, getting clean cuts, I'll typically ask them, when's the last time you sharpen your tool? And their typical response is, if it's their own tool, well, I, I don't remember. If it's a, cl a club tool, their typical answer is, is, no, they didn't sharpen it. So then it's off to the grinder for the basics. So remember, if it's almost sharp, it'll almost cut. If in doubt, sharpen your tool. The second concept I want to cover is ride the bevel. Bonnie Klein uh, does a lot of instruction with, with younger turners and she coined, I think she coined the expression, uh, the mnemonic phrase, anchor, bevel, cut. So let's talk about our ABCs. First, First, put your tool on the tool rest. Put it on the wood with the heel riding on the bevel, and then you're going to lift your handle until the cutting edge starts engaging. Then you're going to lift the handle. Anchor, bevel, cut. Now, the problem with a lot of novice turners that they have with this concept is we as experienced turners, we tell them, ride the bevel, ride the bevel. You're not riding the bevel. The problem they have is a lot of them don't understand what the term means, ride the bevel. What the heck is that? Well, um, Keith Rowley, very noted in instructor, has a really good book out, uh, Wood Turning a Foundation Course. He explains that the bevel is the part that we sharpen. So on a skew, it's this whole entire edge right here, although when we're cutting, Usually, we're just talking about it's this one corner here that's engaging. It's either the toe or the heel. If it's a, uh, a bowl gouge or a spindle gouge, it's that entire profile that's been turned away. That's the, uh, that's the bevel. If it's a parting tool, it's those two sides that are meeting at, at roughly a 60 degree angle. That's the bevel. If it's a scraper, it's this entire area here, but a scraper is an exception. You don't ride the bevel. We're really not going to talk about, about scrapers today. So, so let's look at riding the bevel on some of these other tools. Let's, let's deal with the concept first with a parting tool. Anchor the tool. And slowly lift the tool until the bevel is riding. And then lift it a little higher to engage the cut. Anchor, bevel, cut. With a spindle roughing gouge, similar concept. Anchor the tool, press it against tool rest firmly. Back it up with a heel, that's this edge right here, is rubbing on the wood and it's not cutting and then slowly lift the handle, pointing generally in the direction you're going to cut until you start getting some shavings. And start cutting. If you're dealing with a bowl gouge, similar concept, anchor the bevel, lift the handle until it starts cutting.
Now the problem a lot of beginners have, besides not understanding what the bevel is, is they require correction. And this was really brought home to me in a class I had with a noted uh, wood turner, Stuart Batty, third generation wood turner, and a, and a very skilled uh, in, in, instructor. And he taught uh, a particular cut. It was a, it was a push cut, and I watched him in an all day, uh, all day demonstrate, all day demonstration. I took notes as I typically do, and then a couple of days later, I had a two day class with him. And before we started the push cut. He demonstrated that cut. I referred to my notes and said, yep, yep, maybe added a little concept. So I saw him twice. Then I started practicing the, you know, he had us go off and start practicing. So I started practicing the push cut. He walks by a few minutes later. He hears the noise and he says, oh. He said, oh, you, you got to. You got to press a little harder on the, on the tool rest, and you need to lift your hand a little, uh, your uh, elbow up a little bit more. And I'm thinking, yeah, duh. I mean, I saw you do that before twice. I've got it in my notes. I thought that's what I was doing, but I wasn't. Ten minutes, so I I started back. Ten minutes later, he comes back by. Up. You need to anchor. You you need to press a little harder on that tool rest with these with these fingers. You need to to lift the tool a little bit a little bit higher up with it that. Uh, that elbow up a little higher up. I'm thinking, gosh, you know, I've seen you do it twice. You've corrected me once before, and I'm still not quite getting it, but I thought I had it, but, but clearly I wasn't. So I'm back at it. Ten minutes later, he comes back and gives me the third correction, the same concept where I thought I knew it, knew it. I thought I was doing it. I had it in my head, but I didn't have that hand knowledge. So I think the important concept is for beginners, we can holler terms at them or or repeat it, but they need a correction for it to really go into deep memory, uh, which I think is a uh, a key point is it, it works great when you join a club and you can participate with others and get some correction or you participate in a, ha in a class. Uh, watching uh, videos is good, but you really need someone to correct that behavior. So that's the second important concept, ride the bevel, or as Stuart Batty says, glide the bevel, because actually if you're actually riding the bevel here you're not going to have you're not really going to be engaging the cutting edge so uh, you you glide the bevel which means you are going to have a little bit of distance uh, behind the uh, behind the bevel near the base of the bevel okay the third critical principle I want to talk about is cutting downhill with the grain if you understand how to cut the fibers, regardless of what particular piece of wood or what direction you need to make that cut, you'll, you'll, you'll really have it down. So let's talk about that. First of all, let's start with a spindle. The fibers are oriented in this direction, not unlike a bundle of straws. So if you're cutting with the grain, that means you're cutting from large to small because each fiber cut is being supported by the fiber below it. Uh, Lyle Jamison has an interesting technique where he likens the fibers to your fingers. If you think of these as fibers, you're going to cut in this direction, so this cut is supported by this fiber, this fiber is supported by this longer fiber. It's not terribly diff different from uh, sharpening a pencil. You're cutting with a grain this way. How many of y'all would cut a would sharpen a pencil cutting into end grain? I mean that would make no sense at all. You're cutting with the grain. Now some people call this cutting downhill. I find that to be a very confusing term because you'll see the direction changes based on whether you're doing a spindle or whether you're doing a uh, face grain face grain or, or bowl blank. But let's so let's look at this and say what what are the consequences? So with this half inch spindle gouge, cutting downhill from large to small, you get a nice clean cut. Now once you get to the bottom, you've got to change directions and come in from the other side to meet that cut at the bottom of the cold. Now if you continue down at the bottom and continue to go uphill, you can cut the wood but you're going to get a lot of tear out because you're cutting directly into end grain and, and lifting those fibers.
That would be similar to trying to cut this way from large to small, and you're just going to keep cutting. You're going to keep cutting into those fibers. Whereas if you go this way, each fiber is being supported by the fiber below it. Now that's pretty. That's easy enough to see on a on a, a spindle spindle stock. Now let's let's look at a bowl blank. Okay, so now let's talk about cutting down, uh, cutting with supporting grain with face plate or a, a bowl blank. So if we take a typical uh, blank of wood, the fibers are running horizontal to the lathe, exactly opposite how we did it just a moment ago with a spindle gouge or with a, with a, with a spindle. So it's it's going this direction. As a result, we've got to take that into consideration. So the supporting fibers on this bowl, let's look at that just a moment. If we go back to the concept of, the, of a straw, and let's do the inside of the bowl first. There's the straws. We're cutting down into the bowl, down into the bowl from larger diameter to a smaller diameter by f by cutting these uh, cutting these fibers in this direction. Uh, one person suggested look for the pencil. So there's the pencil on the inside. If you're cutting that pencil point, you've got to be going downhill. If you come in this direction, you're going directly into end grain, and you're going to tear up the fibers at best or at worst get a terrific catch. Now, on the outside of the bowl, it's slightly different. Again, in this case, you're going to go from the smaller diameter to the larger diameter. You see those straws? To get supported fibers. You're going from here and cutting in this direction. Now, normally we do that with a bowl blank in this, this orientation and we're going to be cutting from this side. But the idea is find the pencil. Where, where are we doing it? And that pencil is going, uh, that pencil is, is going around. So on the outside of the bowl, we're going from small to large. On the inside of the bowl, we're going from large to small. Okay, wood turners, remember those three principles next time you start turning. Number one, sharp tools. If it's almost sharp, it'll almost cut. Don't wait till it gets dull. Keep it sharp. Number two, ride the bevel, or as Stuart Betty says, glide the bevel. Pay attention to your cuts and notice, are you, making, are you slicing or are you scraping? And that's the difference in riding the bevel. And third, cut with the grain. Rub the fur. Sharpen the pencil. You're going to find that if you get these, these concepts ingrained in second nature, your wood turning is going to be uh, more fun, safer, and more productive. Do a good turn daily.